like massage my cheeks. All right, cool. There we go. Good. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do over the next while, you, you all know how to use Photoshop Ace now. You've got like an intro. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating assets, so background tiles, foreground tiles, animated sprite sheets, and at the end, the last thing we're going to do is a character, full animation for our character, and we'll set it all up, hook it up to code so things move and interact and play automatically in Unity. Okay, but the first step we're going to do is actually creating these assets. So, number one thing we want to do is, actually, who has experience with any form of art? Any form? Okay, cool. That's quite a good bit. Okay, that's good. Um, for those who don't, the worst thing you can do is be like, I'm going to find my own style. Because when you're starting, and this is my opinion, take it as you will. When I started, I, that's how I went. I was like, fuck learning tutorials, fuck listening to the rules. I'm amazing, I'll do my own stuff. All my stuff was shit. Um, the <laughs> best thing to do for learning is find something that you think looks good, try and figure out how they did it, and you'll slowly, slowly kind of like understand the rules, and when you have a good grasp of the rules, you can go then and break them and create your own style later on. That's my personal take on it, as you will. Um, so what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna find an art style. You're, go you're all gonna get the same theme of a world that we're gonna create. So we're gonna create a little 2D level Again, um, it'll have tiles in it. It'll have um, animated kind of sprite sheets moving along uh, for decor. And it will have, at the end of it, a actual little character moving around inside it. Okay? Um, so the, for next week, just kind of like think of an old school game, ideally an old school game, because it generally tends to be a little simpler. Um, an art style of that and try and figure out how it works. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so as an example, for example, like, the first thing people always try and do is pixel art, and I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, pixel art is just a lot harder than I think people realize. Has anyone tried it before? Yeah. Right, and has anyone tried it thinking it was going to be easy and then realizing it's, yes. it's really tough? Because essentially you're trying to make a lot of detail using a dot. Like, an eye is a dot, and a shadow is like four pixels. So you you're have a, a lot of economy movement. Now, what it does do is it does have a really nice aesthetic, um, and it does allow you to kind of not have to go super high res if you have difficulty with that. Um, but it's not as easy as it looks, right? There's, no, there's pretty much no art style that's easy to do. Um, even stuff like material design, which is like kind of just blocks and solid colors and solid shapes, even that requires you to match colors properly, um, kind of match shading and stuff like that. So there's a little bit of thought and everything. Um, so... We have everything from like lo-fi. This is like really low pixel art, so 16, 8 to 16 bit. There. This is Hotline Miami. And then we have stuff like Alboy, which is like a super high res. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's a gorgeous game. Mm -hmm. um, they have little tricks that they use to make this easier. I'll show you some of them. Um, so you can, you can do something called like a down resing. So one thing that I like to do is I'll paint in high res, and then you can, in Photoshop, Use an algorithm to downres it so it becomes pixel arty, right? So it's kind of a trick way around it. That's one method. And then you have a mix. Say again. Someone say something. Huh? Genius. Genius. Oh yeah. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah like easy. whatever makes it easier for a production. Um, this is a Irish studio. Um, this game is called Dark Side Detective. Uh, Spooky Dory, I think is the name of the studio. They're based on Gali. And this is one where it's very low fi pixel art, but if you can see the the, the lighting, effects. The lighting so, effects are all very high res, <clears throat> like soft, um, and you don't get soft fade in pixel art. Like this is loads of tiny little pixels. That's the only way you get it. So it's high res lighting on very low res uh, backgrounds and aesthetics. But even with that, there's little things that you need to pay attention to. So for example, you see the doorway, the lighting is coming from top right, because then this part is being lit up by the light. You see the highlight, the little shiny bit is up top right. And this is in shadow because that's opposite from it, right? Does that kind of make sense? If lightning's coming from the right, whatever is facing it will be lit up, and whatever is away from it will be in shadow. Um, and you'll see that that is replicated all over. Um, so even though they have the fancy lighting effects, anything that is a um, kind of prop, you'll see it always has this top right kind of like lighting as if it's always from top right. So this consistency is really important. It's tiny little things like that, but if you don't do it properly, um, it'll look weird. Uh, you kind of get away with it with characters because they always flip, so you kind of get away with it. As long as you pick one direction, you should be fine. Um, then this is like Shovel Knight, which is 
an 8-bit one, and it's proper 8-bit, as in it literally only has a color palette. I can't remember how many colors it is, but it's a very limited color palette. 8-bit has a very specific meaning. So sometimes people will say like, hey, I have a game that's 8-bit, but then they have like 500 colors. <clears throat> that's not 8-bit. 8-bit specifically has a very limited palette. I think 8 colors. So, um, And then you have 16-bit. Like on the screen at any given time or yeah, just in total? You can swap the palette. So at a different level, you see that a lot. They'll swap the, the colors that they use, but at, at any level, it's only that little, like, and it used to be a limitation. It used to be literally you couldn't have more than that, but now it's kind of an art stuff. And then Sonic is 16, which gives you way more color, and you have way, 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 way more um, kind of, like, differences and variations in colors. Um, this is the explanation. You don't need to know that. But essentially, two bits is all the way on the right-hand side, and you literally just get, like, a... Um, Oh, it doesn't show you the full thing. No. There we go. Cool. So, sorry, one bit. Uh, a bit is always a one and a zero. Did you remember? So you get two colors. So you get monochrome. Then you get two bits. So you get four colors. And you keep going up and up and up. So you see eight bit then, if we extrapolate that, what's that? Eight by 16 colors? 16 colors? All right. No, 256 colors, because it's... Power of two. If you remember, it's always powers of two. So it's two to the power of eight. Power of eight. Whatever gives you two five six. I'm not a math expert. Deal with it. Um, so and then if we look at like, well, this is it's jumping from eight to thirty two, but the Sonic one was sixteen. So it's like you know, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's like hundreds of thousands of colors anyway. It's loads of colors. And then thirty two, you get like <coughs> four. Billion colors? Yeah, so it's crazy. So as you go up the bits, it just gets exponentially large. Don't really need to know this, but it's just, just a reason to explain why those old games were so limited in color palette. Um, and then there's like tons of other types of 2D visual design. Like this is, I really like this, this is Monument Valley. Um, and it's really simple palette colors. So they have, uh, they basically have these solid colors of like, this is facing the light, so anything facing the light is slightly lighter. Anything not facing the light slightly darker, and then they overlay like lighting effects onto it, like in high res. Okay, so it's very simple sh shapes with high res like fades and stuff on it, which you all know how to do. Use a soft brush that gives you a soft fade. Um, and you'll see with Monument <coughs> Valley, they generally have very limited color palettes, and that's generally less is more when you're trying to do a color. Having 1,000 colors in a scene usually makes it worse, not better. Um, having a limited color palette like this, which is like, has blue, uh, kind of peachy pink, and yellow, that's pretty much it, except for any whites, and that's it. That's, and it looks gorgeous, okay? So um, having that limitation generally helps quite a lot. If you remember the color from the character design presentation I did, um, yeah, and how to pick like triads and quads and tetrads and complementary colors and stuff like that. We'll go over that a little bit again. Uh, but it's essentially how you get the right color palette to use. Did I show you Palaton when I was there? The website? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes, it like, literally just use the, the things on Palaton. Use the settings, your color palette will look nice. Just use that. Um, and then you have, like, this kind of vector arc and stuff, which is a very typical thing that came about in when smartphones first became a thing. Now we have it because, um, well, actually, the same reasons still apply. Can anyone tell me why we have this kind of art style? Why this is so popular? Everything's really clearly defined, which is great. It's so much time on the screen. Exactly. So we have the same issue still. Not as bad as we used to. Like, on average, when smartphone first came out, your screen size was between 3.8 to, like, 4.2. Now it's, like, super normal to have five-inch screens. That's really normal. But back then, it was, like, tiny. So you had to be really legible. So you see these really thick outlines. You don't have a lot of fading, you don't have a lot of soft fading, they're all like um, really hard edge colors because that's really easy to see when you're at a, at a far distance. Um, and it's not, it's, not always, it's not always only for smartphones and stuff, it is an aesthetic that you can use. This game is great as well, like in terms of art styles, really, really well done. Animation is amazing. Um, and they have like a slightly different version where like the background is painted but the characters are all outlines. Now, huh? Skullgirls, yeah. And the reason for that is um, also for legibility, even though it's played on a big screen, 
but because the characters are moving really, really fast, it's a super fast-paced game. It's literally just like a frame-by-frame -frame kind of fighting game. So you need to have clear legibility of your characters at all times. So they, ha they have this same system same kind of art style, both for looks and also for like practicality. And then you can also do like super simple little things like this. Um, this is what? It's a really game. It's great game. Yeah. Great it's game, very, especially go Really good game. And like this is what I always like to show because when people go, I don't know how to do art. It's you can do simple shapes like this. Um, and it's not that they're easy to make. Like each of those is either a square or a block or a combination of a square or a block. But you see that like nice little fades around the edges, like they, they kind of like dodge the ass, remember that? Burning and dodging, they kind of uh, burn the, the kind of corners a bit, so you get a little soft outline. And the back shadow as well. There's a little shadow and everything. Um, that's that You might be able to get away with using that in Unity, or you could paint it in, either way. Um, and then there's a thing called the, remember overlay? I showed you all the overlay. You can do overlay on a texture, so if I have like a paper texture, and I just make like, if I make a block that's just a paper, and I put a paper texture I find from online, and set it to overlay, it will kind of affect the, the whatever is behind it to look like it's giving a paper texture. Um, and that's probably how they made it. I don't know exactly, but it's probably how they made this texture. Um, then you have like this kind of like solid vector art, which is also a really nice look. Again, if you're not really sure what to do, if you remember again from the character design thing, circles, squares, triangles, they're literally all <coughs> circles, squares, and triangles, like, and uh, mostly circles and triangles, uh, and it's just circle, 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 circle. Um, and it's huh? And circle. The bear, yeah, but it's like it's just they're really simple, but it's not just here's a circle done. It's like extensions of it, but putting them together makes it greater than the sum of the whole. Uh, and because they're all, all of them are created using the same kind of rule, they kind of fit together really well. Um, so yeah, and you see the backgrounds are like, these are literally just squares. And it's really nice looking, uh, even though it's simple to make. So if anyone's like terrified that like, oh, I don't know how to make art, that's fine. You don't really need to be an artist to make this kind of stuff, as long as you follow certain simple rules. What's this um, game's name again? Uh, Night in the Woods. That's right. Um, has anyone played it? Who liked it? Do you like it? Yeah. It won, um, IGF, in the, in, in the game of the year. At Game Developer Conference, I'm pretty sure, IGF, last year. Um, and then you have like full high res painted kind of stuff. Like it's simple shapes and they're big and seen, but these are like kind of hand painted kind of look. You still have a cartoon outline, but they're hand painted. Um, and we'll, we can also go over how this one, I can't even do this. So this is from Bastion and Transistor and Fire and. Now, whatever the new game is, I can't remember what the new game is. It's a roguelike. Huh? Is it? No, it's not. No, uh, Pyre is the... No, that was the last one. They're working on a new one now. Hades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hades. The roguelike robot. You're trying to escape from a hotel or whatever. Um, so, yeah. This is completely different. This is literally, like, you know, five to ten years from now, if you're starting drawing now. And that's normal. That's not. That's not like oh, I'm bad if it's five ten years. That's literally how long it takes to, to get good at this kind of stuff. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's that's normal. Like it takes time. So, yeah. So whatever you want to do, try and figure out how they got there to that shape that they did. And this is why I'm like, maybe when you're starting, if you've never done this before, probably just pick a really simple style, something that you like, um, that like maybe like the Money Valley style or the Night in the Woods style. Because they're a lot easier to see how you break it down. Like if I look at something like this, I can barely try and figure out like kind of how it is. And I have quite a bit of experience. And you, whoever hasn't done that yet would have less experience, obviously. Um, so it gets harder and harder the more complex the style you try to emulate. I would always suggest trying simpler first. And then as you get better, you can start. You'll see when you look at more complicated things, you'll be like, oh, actually, I understand that now that I've done it, that I've understood the simpler version, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and then like just literally, like, what colors do they tend to use? Do they outline everything? Um, how is lighting done? Do you have just like a, a painting over everything, or do they use three D lighting? Have you all seen three D lighting yet in Unity? Not yet. In directional tools? lighting. Uh, directional lighting or any kind of lighting. Yeah. It's literally you put a three D thing in. The only thing is it does not affect um two D images usually. You can make it, and there's a way to do it, but it's kind of complicated. Um, and then stuff like this because. This is quite important. Are backgrounds lighter than foregrounds, or are they darker? 
and different games will do it differently. Some games, the backgrounds are lighter. Some games, the backgrounds are darker. Either way, they're generally either um, a shade darker or lighter, so they separate away from the foreground and the background. Okay, so that's quite important. Just to make sure it doesn't get too messy. If it's the same lightness, you generally, you might get mixed up from what you're actually moving around and interacting with to what's in the background. And this one is most of the games use tiles. Anyone know what tiles are? Everyone know what tiles? Who does not? It's fine if you don't. Okay. Tiles are essentially um, a repeating kind of texture. So, it's gonna, can you see my draw here? Is that okay? So if I have an image like that, and let's say that's like, you know, a little grass here maybe, and some rocks, and it doesn't really matter what I have here. And right now I'm only gonna think about horizontal cutting, so cutting sideways. What a, what a tile is, is whatever's on this edge is exactly the same as whatever on this edge. They're exactly the, like the same, which means I can repeat them, <coughs> Yeah. And it will go over and over, and it'll to a player, it will look seamless, right? The player won't realize that they're actually two different images. It just looks like a block. That's it. Now you can get really fancy with tiles. What you can do is you can have like tiles that that tile in all directions. So if I have like a water texture, for example, and it should be able to tile horizontally, it should be able to tile vertically. I did that opposite ways. Um, and no matter what I do, it's if I place them next to each other, they always tile. So that's a little more complicated. But you can get even more complicated, and you can do stuff like, OK, these are horizontal tiles, but they also have an end tile. So at the end, they do that. And that's like a cliff there. And, and there's one special tile that will match this way, but ends in a cliff, for example. And that's how you do an end tile. And you can do bottom tiles and stuff like that. So you can get more and more complicated. For today, we're only going to care about horizontal tiles, right? I'm not going to make it more complicated than that. So literally, like if I put one there and I put one next to it, they look seamless to the player. The player doesn't realize, but they look seamless. Um, every game uses tiles, including 3D model, 3D games. Um, they all use tiles for texturing as well. So has anyone played like PUBG? Yeah. All right. So you know when you're in the plane and you're looking over the water? And the water repeats, and it's like the same exact pattern. That's because it's a tile, and it's the same tile being repeated over and over and over and over again. Yeah. What about in do some games find that when you're in the plane, you're flying over, it tends to get the trees, and if you're flying over and you're painting some trees, you find the trees actually follow where you're that's going. That's a different thing. That's called billboarding. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn does it really well, and that's basically when you're close up to something, it's a 3D model. But when you get further away, it changes to a 2D image. And billboarding it means that it always faces the camera. All right, so that's probably a bad example of billboarding, but they haven't done it properly. Um, you ideally don't want to see billboards for a thing. Like it works in Horizon Zero Dawn because you're like here, and it's so far away that to actually see it rotate, you have to travel like you know five miles because because you're so far away that like you moving, it doesn't really rotate that much. Um, so you don't really notice it. Like the enemies um, in the old Doom game. The old Doom game is a good example. They didn't use exactly billboarding. It's a different kind of thing. But yeah, the, the overall effect is the same. It's like a flat thing that follows you. Um, a lot of games do. You'd be surprised how many games do it. Um, even, the, even the latest games, like um, you also have the Spider-Man one, where you like, the fella got to the, the boat, where you're not supposed to get in the boat, and all the people are oh, yeah. Stuff like that. These are all like optimization techniques. Um, and that's for 3D. Those optimization techniques will be doing some optimization techniques as well in 2D. But it's something that's really important. Because like one picture that's huge, it's not going to break the game. But 20,000 pictures that are huge, now you start running into problems. Uh, sorry, this question? I thought you were going to ask me something. Oh, no, oh, yeah. Yeah, what was I going to say? What's that with GTA? Down. Yeah. With that, but then do you remember on the PS3 you played it I and mean, when you got too fast, you know, like a little too yeah. fast, and, got over, and everything was just shit. Yeah, because <laughs> it's loading in slowly, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's loading in. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of these little tricks that games do. Um, and people laugh at them, but it's kind of a necessity for it to actually run well. So, anyway, um, I don't know what this is. 
There's a bunch of kind of like little tutorials, mini tutorials that I've added in here in case anyone wants to do pixel art. It's really hard. I am not a pixel art expert. So I'm like, I'm from 3D modeling and digital painting background, illustration and stuff. I have done pixel art, but I'm not someone who's like clicking each pixel doing that stuff. I know people who do. But um, but like, and I really respect it, but it's not something I'm an expert on. I can kind of wing it, but I'm not an expert on it. So I've just put in like a bunch of little kind of like tutorials and tricks, and you'll see most of them have the same exact technique as, uh, it's the same exact techniques as when you're painting high res stuff. Essentially, you start with a very simple shape first, really simple shape. If I'm making planks, it's just like loads of little lines. So you make the planks. Then you fill in the detail, uh, sorry, then you fill in the lighting and stuff, and you add a little bit of details, and it slowly adds on more. And then lighting comes like generally towards the end. So you kind of have the shapes of it, you put in like any textures or details and stuff, and then you put lighting. So lighting in this case is like lighting's coming from above, so like bits that are up get hit by light, and bits that are down, like the little gaps and stuff that go down, they get darker. Um, just little kind of things like that. They all follow the same rule. These are three different um, type styles. So one's obviously wood, one's rock, and one's grass. But the rules are pretty much the same for all of them. And there's one for water. And so that's number one. So direct pixel addition is like you literally are drawing the pixel art yourself. Now, if you're doing that, that means in Photoshop, the size of the canvas you're making is going to have to be tiny because pixel art is very low res pixels. Um, pixel art existed because we couldn't have huge high res images. Nowadays, we can have 8K in our games if we want to. But back then, um, a 64 by 64 uh, tile was large. Like that was like state of the art. So um, if you're going to make that look like that, you're going to have to start with a 64 by 64 tile, or even smaller, depending on your look that you want. So this is why I'm like, go pick a look that you want and try and copy it, because it depends on like it depends on the game how high res their tiles are. Um, the other method is the lazy ass method that I like. You can't see it here because it's terrible. So this is a 2048 by 2048, and it's kind of like just a cloud texture. And if you downsize in Photoshop using a t an algorithm called nearest neighbor, I can show you later. Can you see it's like kind of pixely? Yeah. Yeah. So this is one to eight by one to eight. The same exact image. I just downsize it, and it looks like a star. Kind of. You lose a little bit of like it doesn't quite look like pixel art, but it's close enough. Like this. All right. So that's the way I do pixel art if I have to, because again, I'm not a pixel artist. Um. Now. Are you all okay to continue, or do you want to take a little break? You good? Right. You good? Okay, so just real quick, remember the color palette thing again. Those are warmer colors. Those are colder colors. If you are in a cold area, you use these colors. If you are in a warm area, you use those colors, or to signify warmer things or colder things. Um, again, we always use RGB, because RGB makes white. You don't need to care about this. This is CMYK. This is for printing, unless you are doing printing. I don't care. Huh? Where's the A? C M Y K. K is it's black. So um, the difference is if you mix R G B you get white. If you mix C M Y you get black back here. Um, and then like this is just a really simple example of like this makes you feel cold because it's using colder colors. And this makes you feel warm because it's using warmer colors. And it's a really obvious example, but they're you okay, buddy? Yeah. Can you stop molesting my students, please? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this is like a kind of a mixture where it's blue greeny because it's underwater. All right. All right. Marine. Yeah. Bioshock. Yeah. It's a little bit aqua blue. It's not quite pure blue, but it's a little bit like greeny. That's how that's how you show it's underwater. It's like a blue green kind of turquoise. Um, and then you saw this one already. So we we'll pop through this. This is how you pick colors. You've seen all of this, so that's good. Never ever use pure black or pure white. This is a good reason why you should never use pure white. <laughs> Can't see it. Um, so the the thing with pure black and pure white is, depending on the screen, it can look. If you have an OLED screen, for example, and you use pure black, it looks like there's a hole in the screen. So you kind of don't want that. Um, the same with pure white. You generally don't want to go pure pure white. The only exceptions are outlines. So if I'm drawing an outline or something, pure black's okay. Um, or like super bright highlights. A highlight is like a shiny spot. So I don't, I don't know if my face has any, but like you might be able to see there's some spots that are really, really shiny. Generally on like areas that are a bit sweaty. 
if that's pure white, that's okay. Um, and then we can obviously use color as indicators, and this is kind of more game design stuff, but it is related to visual design as well. So like Portal is a great one because it's super, everything is super bland and super white, but there's big red buttons that are like, hey, interact with the big red button, maybe. And then when you do it, these colors that are blue and kind of like blend in with the white, they turn to orange yellow. So then they start to contrast loads compared to the background. So right now they blend into the background because they're not activated. When they're activated, orange yellow, it gets really clear and you can see the, the link going all the way up there. Um, and this one is like where certain colors are only ever used for certain things. So in Monument Valley, uh, fucking great game. Huh? <laughs> 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 Unity as well. Um, so they use the color palette stuff that I was telling you about. So they, I think they have a triad system. Um, it's either triad or tetrad. Um, but there are three colors. One of them is always used as the accent color. So there's always one color. See that color? That's most of the, generally the most muted color. So this one is gray. And every, almost everything is gray. Then they have like a secondary color that's green. And then they have the tertiary, tertiary color that's yellow in this case. So all the important things, you can interact with this and you can interact with this. All the important things are in the accent color. So it always goes like most of the, the boring stuff is in one color, then the secondary color, and then the, the accent color. Same with this one, most everything is blue, and then you have this kind of like slightly yellowy thing, and then you have this really red purples, and they stand out more. So you're using them as indicators. Um, did I ask you why you should never use this? Did I? What? No, it's not to do with that. In terms of visual language. Yeah, red, green, color blindness. Never, if you can. Use red and green. Is that why uh, some games do blue and orange? Blue and red and blue and orangey red, yeah. So the Our most common change it from red to yellow. Which I don't well, know if it's much of a difference. Most games do have color blind sets, though. Most games do have color blind sets, well, but like squad. red and blue doesn't. It, like, it gives you almost the same contrast as red and green, so you might as well use red and blue. Just to be, uh, just to be easier. This yoke. Th have I told you about this one? Yeah. yeah? Okay, awesome. Sweet. And then here is like a color palette tutorial. I'm not going to go through everything in here, but it's a really good tutorial. Like have a read through that and explains why you use certain colors and what like what colors mean for each thing. Cool, yeah? Um, that's more color palette stuff. Um, and then when you're building stuff, do use like kind of real life and, you know, go outside, go to a park once in a while, go to an art gallery, have a look at things. Art galleries are actually really good because you kind of see how artists represent things in the simplest way possible, especially impressionists and stuff like that, like Monet and Manet, you can, a blob of paint can become a water lily when you're looking at it from further away. And it's just like a, like that. Um, but it, it represents something and it's it's a good way to understand how you too can represent something. So like that's the Amanita and obviously it's the same kind of mushroom. That's a poisonous kind of mushroom. It's based on the same thing. But if you're gonna put all these little flecks of tiny white pixel on there, it just would not look as clear as just like they have spots, so we're gonna make like, like very few giant spots. It looks better that way than those tiny little flecks. So you don't have to be accurate, you can stylize it. And generally making it larger, so like a tiny spot here making it really big is better. Because remember this thing is like what really small on screen. So um, kind of exaggerating them generally works better than having less of them. This again this is a tutorial of like how to do lighting. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. But essentially what you need to remember is, if you look at the thing that's labeled as not a boob, it, it, it says there as well. Um, whatever is above will always like throw a shadow, right? Anything that's up will always throw a shadow behind it. And the shadow will always be opposite to the light source. And towards the light source will always be a hot spot, kind of like an area that's kind of like a little bit shinier. And shiny stuff, that hot spot will be really, really, really bright. And stuff that's not as shiny, there is still a hot spot there. It's way more subtle though. So you, it's always a little bit lighter towards where it's looking at the light. And then wherever it is behind and being blocked and occluded will get dark and shadow. Cool? Simple rules, but if you do that, again, keep the style considered. So if you're deciding to do all flats, everything is all flat. If you're deciding to do like blends, then you blend everything. So just make it consistent, whatever you choose. 
Um, those overlay layers I told you about, um, use them to try and like blend in lighting. So there's like one lighting direction and having a second light on the other side. We see like it's orangey and bluey. That makes the two of them there. Um, and then obviously you can get super complicated. So like uh, it changes, lighting changes how something looks quite a lot, which is why I'm like, when you're starting, just pick one direction and just learn how to do that one really well before you start going to crazy other lightings. Cool. Um, let's not go over that one. And yeah, so we are gonna open up Photoshop. Now, one thing to realize is at the end of what you're creating, what you will put into Unity is always a PNG. So I don't care what tool you make. I'm gonna show you Photoshop because that's industry standard and because like Photoshop allows you to do a lot of other things. But if you want to use some other pixel art or some other, or Scrida or freaking Manga Rock or uh, whatever you Blender. want to use, huh? Blender. Blender for painting. Good luck. Um, do whatever you want. Like, this is really good art called Pixel. Do whatever you want because the, the end result is always a PNG. Um, so just do whatever you want. But I will be teaching you Photoshop anyway. And there's a bunch of little extra reading stuff in there. Um, like stuff for color blindness and accessibility and stuff. What's the main tool used in like the industry? Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah. Like vast majority. Like pixel in, stuff too. No, no, no. Pixel, pixel stuff is very much more varied, to be honest. Some people do use Photoshop, definitely. Um, it's very varied. There's loads. There's Pixel and there's like what's the one to bring you, Brand? What do you use? Ace Sprite. Ace Sprite, yeah, and that as well. There's like a bunch of different ones. Um, yeah, pixel art, to be honest, isn't isn't like the most. There's not like a head, like a top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like some things are better for some and whatever. So yeah. So for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try and create a tile. Uh, give me a background, please, like a kind of like like rock or cliff or something. Ice. Ice? Would be great. Brick. Ice bad? Brick. I like brick. Do brick. Brick's easy. Go do brick. I can do ice, but because the problem with ice is it's translucent or any liquid. So you need to have a highlight on one side and also on the other side. And it gets darker from one side. It's, it's a little more complicated. Yeah. Can you say okay and go the way? Uh, just in general, try your entire career. If you ever see an error message and you can hit OK and it goes away, <laughs> go away. If you hit OK and it's bad, then obviously you need to fix it. But okay, so um, just when we start, y'all remember 72 pixels per inch. Y'all remember RGB. 8 bit is fine. You can do my transparent. I remember I said there's two ways you can do uh, pixel art for today. I'm gonna do pixel art. I'm gonna try. Um, you can either do high res and down res it, or you can start from low res. Let me just show you what happens to the difference between the two. So I'm gonna do one that's high res. Cool, and then I'm gonna do another one that's low res. So low res can be as low as like, 32, let me do 64 by 64 pixels. So you see it's way tinier. That's 124, that's 64. Um, if I want to fill something with a color, I'm just going to select color, I can just hit Alt Delete and it fills the entire page. So I'm just going to show you a difference real quick. I'm just going to do it with, uh, I am painting with a, a mouse, by the way, because you all have mice. Mices? Mices? Mises? Mises. But a tablet will give you pressure sensitivity. All the Macs here do support tablets. Um, so if you bring one in, you can, uh, any Wacom tablet, you can plug it in. 
However, uh, I don't expect you all to get it unless you're really into art. If you are into art, you definitely should get into it. Um, so what I can do instead of doing a pressure sensitivity is I'll use the opacity so that I can build up kind of lighting here. So this is a high res image. And in low res, it's much harder for me to get that kind of look. It's, it's almost the same though. So here we go. And then let's say I'm finished. So you can see the differences between two of these, right? It's almost like one smaller than the other. But if I zoom in, can you see that it's kind of like all pixely? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so that's because it's low res. And that may be an aesthetic that you want because that's pixel art. This, if I zoom in, it's not. In fact, I need to zoom in way more before it even starts pixeling, like up to here. But I can get it to look like this. I can. And that is by image, uh, image size. And I can just go 64 by 64. That's not enough. Let me just show you what happened. If I do it like this, when it resamples, it will try to keep it smooth. So it's like, it's pixely, but it's not quite that much. Uh, whereas if I do it with a method called uh, nearest neighbor, it, the way it says hard edges, it will try and keep it hard edged. It takes a while. What? I meant to do that. Cool. And it, see the way it looks a lot more pixely? I don't know if you can see it, because the other, the first way I did it, there was a lot more fade. And this way, the edges are a lot harder. So it looks a lot closer to the actual pixel art. So it's just a quick way. That's how I do it. If someone ever asks me to do pixel art, I'll do it this way. It's easier for me. Or you can do the other way, which is just drawing on a very low res canvas. OK, so what do we say we're going to do? Bricks? Bricks. OK, bricks. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm doing the high res to low res. If you want to do your low res, it's fine. What I will be doing is I will be down resing to uh, 64 by 64. So if you want to try the, the straightaway pixel art, do a 64 by 64. If you want to do what I'm doing with the high res way, uh, I'm doing it on 1024, and I'm going to resize it down to 64 after. Yes, okay. question. I love the same brush type as you, but every time I take it, it just rotates the uh huh. It's trying to give it like a different. It's trying to make it look painterly. Yes, but it's not even painting the blue color on the pink purple. <laughs> Is this rotating? Even if I don't want to. Just right for me. Oh, that one. <laughs> uh, whatever, to be honest. Um, this is one I downloaded, so you may not have it. The one, if you want to do a textury brush that's on all Photoshop, it's wet media. So if you right click and go to, where is it? Or we go to window and brushes, boop, and you should be able to find uh, wet media up here somewhere. There you go, wet media, and Photoshop has a default brush that looks pretty good. Where is it gone? Why is it all Kyle stuff? I don't know. <laughs> Reduce him to an even like lesser state. Just decrease wouldn't be able to contain his power. <laughs> So yeah, I have different brushes than jeez. I have different brushes than most people would have. Um, but you just like figure out, play around with the normal brushes. I can go to a basic brush if it helps. 
Let's go. So I'm just using a basic soft brush, soft round that everyone should have. Okay, so first step, what I need to do if I'm gonna create a brick wall is I'm gonna go look what a brick wall looks like. Um, I know what it looks like, but I wanna be sure. So I'm gonna search for a brick wall because there might be different types of brick walls that look better to me. <laughs> All right, so if I look at this, um, you can see there's loads of different types. This one is like just pure orange with darker areas inside it. This one has a actual kind of grayish background. Um, this one is a mix of both. So that's important to know because like you can't just like make a thing without thinking about it carefully. So I'm going to try this one. Yeah, I like that one. So I'm going to have a look. Uh, so it looks kind of like dark gray in the back. So what I might do, I can even copy this, bring that into Photoshop. And if I hit Alt, if I'm on the brush tool and I hit Alt, you see a little eyedropper shows up. I can actually select that color. So I'll get the actual color and then I can fill the whole area with it. So I can, so I have that done. And then after I've filled an area, um, there's two methods. You can work light to dark or dark to light. I like working dark to light. And what that means is you start with the darker colors first and you build up lighter colors on top of it. So let me just show you what I mean. So I have this as the background. Let me make the brick color a little lighter than that. So maybe one of these colors. And I'm going to draw a brick. Now remember that image I show you of the mushroom, where the mushroom was, the spot in the mushroom was way bigger than it was in real life. So I'm exaggerating. Again, same thing. I'm probably not going to draw loads of tiny little bricks. A, because it's a pain in the hole, and B, because like um, I want it to look kind of chunky and cute. So I'm going to try and make a bigger one. So I'm just going to draw one brick, and if you do not know how to do stuff, you probably want to pay attention here. So I'm going to try and make like a, a square shape, first of all, as a brick. And by the way, um, holding shift will keep it straight. So I'm just going to color that in. Yeah, and that if, you prep, if you go to an area, press shift. And wherever you paint the last one, just draw a straight line from... I literally just said that. Oh, <laughs> like if I hold shift, I can do that. But uh, if I click and hold shift, it'll go straight. See the way it's trying to keep straight? Um, and I can also do stuff like that. Yeah, that's really uh, Holding shift and clicking. So I have this bricky shape, and that's fine. However... It doesn't look quite that interesting. It's just like a, a normal basic shape of a brick, but it doesn't look nice. Okay, so let me just save that here so we can look at it later on. I just want to show you a difference. So this is like basic brick and I'll show you how lighting can make things look so much better. And this is brick with lighting. Cool. So generally you'll pick a, an area where light will show up. And it's up to you which which area, like where you want light to, to show up from. I'm going to be like, light is coming from here, top left, okay? And what that means is, let me just put it a different layer so you can see it. Um, let me just make it uh, there. So my light is coming from here, which means is, if this is a brick, it's kind of like, you know, sticking out the wall kind of. So these parts will get hit by the light, and these parts will be in shadow because the light's coming from that way, correct? All right, and because the light's coming from here, um, whichever the corner that's closest to the light will be a little brighter than every other corner. You don't really see, I probably shouldn't have used uh, yellow, but it's like, a, it should be a little brighter than all the other colors. Right, so now that looks crap, because I just wanted to show, just to show you how it looks like. And this is how you'd actually do it softly. Um, so you understand that's how it works. So what you're actually going to do when you're painting is you'll probably actually, um, there we go. You'll probably actually give me my normal soft round brush size. Cool. Um, you, this opacity here, you probably want to drop that down loads, loads. So I'm going to use 10% um, here or five or whatever. You can also tap the number of keys. So like, 
3 is 30, 4 is 40. So I'm going to go 1, and that's 10%. Um, and then flow, I'm going to drop that down as well a little bit. So what that means is when I paint, you see the way it's like very light when I paint? It's not very strong. Um, if I had high opacity, it would be much more when I paint it. So I'm going to drop it back down to very low opacity. Now, why am I doing that? Select that color. And here's a trick that I like to use, which is I know it's going to go towards the yellow color, right? Because I, I said it was a yellow light coming up. So what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit lighter and I'll shift the color a teensy bit towards that yellow. So it's as if that yellow is affecting it. And then I'm going to do like, and because it's very light, I don't know if you can see it building up. Can you? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very light, but you can see it building up. And I can also do a darker color, and I'll paint in on this side here. Cool. That's close enough. And then remember, the corner that's closest to it will be the lightest. So I'll bring that a little bit further again, and I'll do that area being lightest. And this is a very, very simple brick, okay? Really simple. And uh, as opposed to this, that just looks way better, even with that really simple trick. Now, what I can do after that is I can add even more detail to make it look better. So let me just add shadows. Remember, I'm not going to pure black. So I'm going to add really simple shadows here, like around the side. Okay. Yeah, it looks way better with that, just a little bit of shadows. And I add a bit of shadows here as well, because when you put a brick into a wall, it has a little dip inside it, even with the part that's facing the light. So I'll put like a tiny little shadowy dip here. And I love this trick. It's really easy to do. Bricks have cracks often. So I'm going to just do like a little, little crack. And just that little crack makes it look much better. And because the crack has a corner edge on it, I can highlight that corner edge because that's facing the light. And essentially I get from this to that, and it's not that hard. You can obviously go way more and do more complicated stuff, but even this is good enough. Like, And then you just add a bit more detail here and there, a few more little cracks and stuff. You can define it a little more if you want. And remember I'm using a mouse, and this is much, much easier if you have a, a tablet, because you can just like use it like a pen and I have that brick um, it's probably I'll just paint over this so it's a bit lighter cool all right once I have one brick this is the other beautiful thing about Photoshop if I have one brick I can move it around but I can also copy it and put a brick down here oh shoot and then resize it and now it looks like a completely different brick because it's a different scale and it just makes it a lot easier um, and then if I copy it again, let me put this one up here, and I can paint over this one, so I give it a different, a different look. And this time I make the crack go the other way because I'm sneaky. I'll just make, um, I'll make that I'll crack like that. And see the way I keep hitting Alt to try and select colors that I already have. And now it looks like a completely different brick. All right. Um, and I can even do stuff like not only copy and scale it. Uh, if I hold Shift, I can squash it. So again, same brick. Probably want to get rid of this because it makes it too obvious. And now it looks like a different brick. It looks like a square one. And I'm really quickly populating this entire background. Like, it doesn't look that bad. Considering I spent like 10 minutes on it, it actually doesn't look that bad. And I could obviously spend more and more time. Julio? Um, so that is how... Uh, by the way, when you're moving loads of stuff like this on the Move tool, you can do this Auto Select, which makes it easier. Because usually, if you don't have Auto Select, you need to go and find the layer and actually find the layer that, of the thing you want to move. If Auto Select is on, you can just click on it, and then you've got it. So you can just click on whatever you want to move, and it just makes it easier. 
Kulibops. Now here's where I run into the tiling problem. If I go somewhere like this, for example, this will need to tile on to uh, the next tile alongside it, right? So this one needs to have a corresponding one here. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just show you how to do that now. Um, so what I'll do is, I know there's going to be one here. I can Alt, and if I hold Shift, it keeps it straight, and I'll put it here. But that probably won't match perfectly. We'll see. Um, and I can only really do this after I finish everything. So let's say, let's say I'm done with this. Um, what I might do is actually, I'm going to go to the background and just give the background some lighting as well. So in the background, I'm just going to just do something like that. And that just makes it like not just a flat color. Okay, it just gives it a bit of texture. It's not very obvious. Did you, could you see it? When I yeah. yeah. All, right. All right, so let's say that's done. Um, I'm going to grab up everything in here. Uh, and just control G will create a group out of it. So that's a full group out of everything. And I always like to do this because if I fuck up, I still have that group. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate that group. Duplicate. Oh, sugar. No. No, I hit the wrong button. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, I think I started a calculation of something. Duplicate group. Okay, so I'm going to hide the original group. It's still there. It's just hidden. So worst case scenario, if I screw up, I still have that backup there. Okay, notes. Um, and then I'll do right click and I will, where is it? Merge group. And that flattens it. So you see it's one texture now. Yeah. So it's one single texture. Now, it, it's like this, though. It's got bits off the side, and this one's got bits off the side. So what I, what I need to do is I need to chop off those bits, first of all, so it's one square. And then I need to make sure it tiles sideways. So first thing to do is chop it off. Easiest way to chop is you just go to the crop tool here. Crop. By default, it selects the whole image. Enter. And you see the way it says here, delete crop pixels. If I, if I have that tick on and I hit enter, it now just deleted all the ones that are outside of my canvas area. Okie dokes. So that's deleted. Now I need to make sure that it wraps. So I know that it's a square and now I need to wrap it. I know this is a lot of stuff, um, and but like it is being recorded and I will put that up, okay? Um, so now I need to wrap it. So I need, how do I find out whether this bit matches with this bit? I could try, yeah. They're the old school way, Sergio, is exactly that. That's the old school way. You just literally copy and paste and do that. And then you would try to like match them. Uh, it actually doesn't match that badly. That is the old school way. And it's not wrong. It's just a lot harder than the way we can do now. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this just so you can understand what I'm doing. So it's a bit confusing. But basically, I can tell Photoshop to wrap this around. I can tell it to move the image and wrap the bits that are off so they come back here and that way I can change the scene between them. Um, it's a bit hard to understand, but if I do, I'll make like a little X here. And a little tick here. Cool. I'm going to try and wrap this around. So this area and this area will be in the middle and they're meeting each other. And that is done by Filter, other, offset. My image is 1024 by 1024. So if I want this edge to wrap around to the middle, it needs to be half of that. So 512, right? And I'm doing it horizontally. So 512, okay. And you see the way it's like wrapped around? The, the green has wrapped around to this side now. So I'll do is just undo. And basically, Photoshop has wrapped it around so then i can see i don't know if you can see it here but like even looking at my computer it's very clear there's like a little line here yeah, yeah. yeah you can very see that slight. and that's what i need to get rid of hmm? oh perfect yeah that's really clear um and i need to get rid of that because when i tile the player's going to see those lines and go oh it's just a bunch of tiles if i get rid of that they won't know that so all i need to do then is literally just paint over it. I'm using the paint tool again. 
I'm using the Alt to select color near it. And um, let me get rid of those. Okay, close enough. Close enough. And now, if I type, oh sugar, what am I doing? If I tile it, it just keeps tiling, and it's fine. And let me let me now do the downsize. Oh, let's add a little. Let's add a little, a little green plant, a little crack here, and we'll have a nice little green plant coming out of here. And again, I'm starting from dark colors to lighter. Okay, so cool. So it should tile. Um, so I have my image done, and I'm just going to resize it then to what did we say? 60. Six, 64, let's do 64, and I'm going to keep nearest neighbor, and if I zoom in, you can see it looks pixel arty, isn't it? So let me make a new, I'm just going to test it, I'm just going to put it on a new, huh? Absolutely, and no, so you can't ever size stuff up, I, I said it in the first, but we did a lot of things on that day, if you size stuff up, it'll, Photoshop will allow you to size it up, but it'll always blur it. It'll always look a little blurrier. Um, let me put it on a one or two four. So if I use the move tool, hit Alt, I can copy, and I can copy to here. Cool, there it is. And let me just test it. I'll just Alt and snap them together. And you can kind of see that it. Oh, I I didn't I didn't do the top and bottom, so the top and bottom don't tile, but sideways they tile pretty well. Sorry, let me. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can see that they they tile quite well, and if not for that little green thing that I put in, you probably wouldn't even notice that it was a tiling background. Okay, so I I kind of put that in on purpose so you can see. Do you see the seams? I can barely see them. So that's how it works in games. And you just have like a giant wall of those tiled. The player doesn't know, he's busy trying to kill an enemy or something, and doesn't know that the background is actually the same image tiled over and over. It also saves um, a lot of memory. Because if you imagine if I'm doing a whole background, a giant image, um, it's huge. Whereas if I use that some same small one and copy it loads, and then decorate it with other little tiny small tiles, it's way cheaper. Okay, because in the game engine, if I have one thing and copy it, it's way cheaper than, it's not the same as copying that same thing. Like literally the game engine goes, okay, I will load this tile, okay, I'll then repeat that tile over this distance. So it only needs to load in one thing, as opposed to a giant image, it loads in a huge image. Cool? All right, uh, I know I've given you a lot of stuff there. Uh, what time is it? Oh, we've got loads of time. I'd like you to try to build a tile. Try and build one of those. I'm here to help you. Um, that video will go up later as well. But try and do what I've just done. No. I, I think dark will work on the